Good morning. Good morning. Not bad. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. If you are a visitor, welcome. You're a visitor once. After that, you're family. Are there any announcements this morning? I wanted to remind everybody that today is our taco bar right after church. And if you want to invite her to come join us to eat for lunch today, thank you. And when she says taco bar, it's just tacos. <laughs> Anything else? But it's not Taco Bell. Thank you, ma'am. Much better. It is. 100% better than Taco Bell. Much better. Uh, just, uh, um, just a note for the future. Uh, June 7th and 8th is the yard sale. Uh, Jonah's got us some flyers for those that want to have a spot outside for your oh, own yeah. stuff. Uh, we will have, you know, inside stuff that's donated that proceeds from that go to church. But those, there's at least 10 of them out there if anybody wants to take one that tells all about that. Any others? Ann? Uh, don't forget next Sunday is Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Sunday after the tea party is Pentecost, and we've got some things planned for that too. So, and on Pentecost Sunday, which is the 19th, am I correct? Yes. We would like for you to wear red. Now, women, do not tell your husbands, I have to go out and buy a new outfit so I can wear red. <laughs> if you don't have red, don't worry about it. But if you have something red, wear red for Pentecost Sunday. Could you say that about the outfit a little bit louder? <laughs> Disregard that last comment. <laughs> Any others? I got one. I got one. I'll, I'll kind of add on to Ann's about this. Uh, this year, as the women are going to take care of Mother's Day and <coughs> gifts and, and for Father's Day and all. But next year, next year, we want the men to take care of the women. Yeah. <laughs> I called that for a vote in the planning meeting. You know those women wouldn't even vote on it? I was outnumbered. Me and Jerry. Any others? Yes, as you can tell, I'm in a good mood today. Any others? Yeah, he's already home.
Are there any joys or prayer concerns this morning? I'd like us to remember our Latin American brothers and sisters and pray for them as they live in fear in their countries. Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. Any others? on Thursday. We had a couple to stop. I had prayer with them. She was crying. I was crying. And we were all crying. Such a blessing to be able to do that. And I just appreciate everybody in the church that helped and everybody that prayed those hours. Yes. Any others? I'm having, uh, it must be retinal cell disease. I'm having cataract surgery on my right eye Thursday, which is no big deal, until he told me he's going to have to give me a shot behind my eye to keep my eye from moving. husband's brother-in-law, which is in the hospital. He's in um, critical condition. Any others? I think we certainly need to remember all the police officers uh, that were killed this week and their families and uh, for uh, all the horrible things that are happening in our cities and on our college campuses uh, throughout the United States. We just really need to be in prayer for all the situations. Any others? I love dogs and dogs get bit. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say um, how good it looks to see this sanctuary so full of people. We want we to be a friend. Um, this is just wonderful. And I want to welcome Doris back. And I um, yes. want to say how good it is to see Mildred on both feet. Yes. Any others? <laughs> if you have an unspoken request that you would still like to give to God, let it be known by your sign of surrender. Lord, it's been a tough week, but you've been with us every step of the way. And knowing this, we know that we can truly surrender all. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Just thank you. We praise your holy name for who you are, what you are, pure love. We thank you for the many promises that you've given us, promises that you would hear us and answer us. Thank you. Simply. Thank you. Thank you for being there with us when we were sick. Healing us, helping us with the pain. Helping us with the pain of heartache, with grief, with depression, with loneliness. Thank you. And for those that are, are facing all these things, sickness, depression, loneliness, guilt, remind them that they can call on you and you will stick closer than a brother. And if they do not know you, 
I pray that they will truly call on you. That they will give you their hearts and enter into a personal relationship with you. And know this love. Know this comfort. And know that you are with them and with us even until the end of the age. Thank you. Simply thank you. Father, you've heard your children's requests and we know that you will answer them. Thank you. For those that are sick and need a touch from the great physician, we know that you will heal according to your plan. Thank you. For those that are lonely and depressed, for those that are in pain, we know you're with them. We know that you can heal. Thank you. For those that may be watching from home and unable to be in your house and want to be here, touch their hearts and let them rejoice and worship with us. And we thank you that you're a God that can be everywhere at all times, leading all your children to worship. Thank you. Now, Father, we leave all these petitions, whether spoken or unspoken, and we know that you will answer. And we know this because it was a promise. Again, thank you. Now, Father, we leave these requests and know that they will be handled. And we claim them done by praying in the manner in which your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join with us in reaffirming our faith using the traditional Apostles' Creed located on page 881. 881. And if you are a visitor, you will hear us say, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. The word Catholic simply means universal. So we are saying that we believe in Christ's universal church. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We ask your blessings upon it. We ask that you bless those who gave and those who were unable to give. We ask that this offering be used for the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout our community, our country, and our world. And let the church say, Amen. Our children will please come. Let everybody tell us their name today. Amara. Amara. Asher. Asher. Abel. Riley. Riley. That's just like in school when kids are not supposed to talk, they're just screaming. But when you ask them to say something, they're just so quiet and you can not hear them. <laughs> well, we're glad to have all of you here today. I love you too. I love you too. Um, we're going to talk about choices. Do you know you have a choice? You can do what's right, or you can do what's wrong. You can be kind and loving, or you can be mean and hateful. You can say good words, you can say bad words. We all have choices. Even adults, we have choices that we have to make every single day. And if we make bad choices, we have to suffer the consequences. Do you know what suffer the consequences mean? In other words, if I decide to speed and I get pulled over and get a ticket, is it the police officer's fault? No, it's mine. I try to blame the police officer, but it's my fault. But when I report it to Ron, it's the police officer's fault. We have choices. And God gives us choices every single day. Did you know that God is with you 24 hours a day? He's with you when you get up in the morning. He's with you at noontime. He's with you at supper time. He's with you all night long. He is never, ever not with you. And he gives you choices to do what's right and to do what's wrong. Now, when we're young, kids... Uh, you know, our choices might be to mind our parents or not mind our parents or to do our homework or not do our homework. But when we grow up, those choices can, be, can, be, can become very serious choices. And this, the consequences can become very serious if we choose not to follow the laws or choose not to do what we're supposed to do or what's right or wrong. So it's very good if we learn as children that we need to make good choices. Now, um, I want everybody to stand up. Please stand up. Now that you get in the line. Face that way. And I have something right here. You gotta get in the line. And I have something here. You understand one of these before? You know, we have a cat. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Ah, I you do? You have a cat? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is a little kitty cat. And it's a little lazy. I want you to follow this light. Now, following the leader. Follow the light. Oh, you're doing a great job. Try to follow the light. Try to follow the light. You are doing a great job. 
go where I should go. Stop following the lies. I don't, baby. Don't I don't like ah. Oh, my goodness. That was great. Okay, get back in line. Get back in line. Get back in line. Let's pretend that this light is Jesus, and he wants us to follow on a straight and narrow path. Okay, now follow it, and this time I want you to come back over here, follow the line, and I want you to sit back down. Okay. When this light was going straight, that's, let's say that's Jesus, and he wants us to, to choose good choices. When it was going around like this, who do you think that was? Jesus. Uh, maybe not Jesus. This was Jesus. The devil. Maybe the devil. Maybe he's wanting us to be all confused and doing all kinds of things and not listening to mom and dad and not paying attention in church and, and being mean and hateful with each other and stomping on each other's toes and sticking our toes out. That. You're going to be nice. Okay, that's what God wants us to do. He is teaching you at a very young age what's right and what's wrong. And then as you grow up and you become adults, you will have a better idea of what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Jesus is always with us. Now, will we make mistakes? Will we ever make a mistake? Yes. Every single day we'll make mistakes. But always remember, you can ask for forgiveness. And will God forgive you? Yes, he will. Let us pray. Jeremy, Father, thank you for these children. Thank you for being with them and, and going with them every single minute of every single day. And not only them, but also with us adults. Thank you for always being with us. And thank you for helping us to make the right choices that we can lead others to you. In thy name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right song, wrong version. <laughs> Did it get mis misplaced?
through 5. 1 John 5, 1 through 5. We'll give our folks that are watching at home just a few extra moments to find 1 John 5, verses 1 through 5. And if you are watching from home, please leave a comment in the comment section and let us know that you are. And if you have a special need, you can also leave a comment or send a, a message to the church and we will get back with you. As you are able, let us please stand at the reading of 1 John 5, 1 through 5. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ born of God, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, and we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who comes by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. There's a truth in this passage that calls us to believe, to love, and also to overcome. We are called to believe in the birthright that we have as children of God. To bask in the love he has for us. And to become world overcomers through our faith. J.I. Packer once said, There's a difference between knowing God and knowing about God. When you truly know God, you have an energy to serve him. Boldness to share him. And a contentment in him. That's the part of our message this morning. We're not merely called to, to know God, but to truly know Him, to serve Him, to share Him, and find our contentment in Him. So let's get started this morning. First thing I want to talk about is believing in the birthright. Now, if we consider the idea of a birthright, we always think of uh, in the lines of an inheritance or a lineage. In a worldly sense, a birthright is something that is inherently ours by virtue of our birth. It's a right, a privilege, or an entitlement that we didn't have to earn or work for. It's simply ours because of who we are. Now, now, everyone knows what an inheritance is, right? Parents pass away, you get all their money and all their land and everything. Well, I tell our daughter that we are spending her inheritance. But that's exactly what we're talking about. But that's in a worldly sense. Let's talk about the spiritual sense. Our birthright as believers it is much the same. It's something that we didn't earn or something that we didn't work for. It's ours simply because of who we are in Christ. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're born again. And we become children of God. And as His children, we have a birthright. We have an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and it does not fade away. Now, this birthright is not something that we can see or something that we can touch. It's not houses or land or money. It's something far more valuable. It's eternal life. 
It's the promise of a home in heaven. It's the assurance of, of God's love and care for us. Not just in this life, but for all eternity. But this birthright is, is not just about what we will receive in the future. It's also about who we are right now. As children of God, we are part of His family. We are loved. We're cherished. And we are valued. We have a purpose. And we have a destiny. We have a role also to play in this kingdom. But we are also heirs of God's promises. In the Bible, God has given us many, many promises. Promises of His presence, His peace, His provision, His protection, and His power. As His children, these promises are ours to claim. But claiming our birthright is not just about receiving. It's also about believing. It's about believing in who we are in Christ Jesus. It's about believing in what He has done for us. It's about believing in what He has promised us. Now, believing in our birthright is not always easy. There's times when we might feel that we're unworthy or undeserving. There's times when we might doubt or question. There are times when we might even be tempted to trade in our birthright for, for something less, something more temporary, something that seems more tangible or immediate. But our birthright is something that cannot be taken away from us. As long as we hold on to His hand, as long as we keep our faith, it's not something that we can lose or forfeit. It's ours, not because of what we've done, but because of what Christ has done for us. Let's talk about basking in God's love. Let's turn our attention to the love of God. This love as described in 1 John 5, 1 is, is not a fleeting emotion. It's not a passing fancy. It's a deep, abiding love that is steadfast and transformative. It's a, a love that we are invited to bask in, to rest in, and to draw strength from. The love of God is not passive. It's active, dynamic, and life-changing. And yes, you've heard me say this many times over the past few weeks, but like I said last week, love is important. It's active, dynamic, and life-changing. Now, how many here have been Methodists most of your life? I can't put my hand up. But the reason I became Methodist, and I chose Methodism, I didn't grow up in the Methodist church. I chose it because of the theology, Wesleyan theology. And I loved how Wesley described the phases of grace. How many know those three phases, as I like to call them? Prevenient, justifying, sanctifying. Okay, well, let's talk about it for just a second. God's love is a love that reaches out to us seeks us and draws us in. Now for those of us who love Wesleyan theology, that sounds like prevenient grace. It's a love that once experienced changes us from the inside out. Again, for those of us who love Wesleyan theology, that sounds like justifying grace. It's a love that compels us to love others, to love God, and to keep His commandments. And that sounds like Sanctifying grace. It's a love that is not passive, but a love that's active. And it's also a love that is not burdensome. It's not a heavy yoke that we're forced to carry. Instead, it's a source of strength. 
It's a, a wellspring of joy and a beacon of hope. It's a love that empowers us to overcome the world. To rise above our circumstances and to live victorious lives. The lives. Now, again, our Greek word of study. But guess what? It's the word you know. We, for the past two weeks, guess what? Same word again today. What is that word again? Agape. Agape. What does it mean? Unconditional love. Self-giving love. Self-giving love. Self-giving love. Unconditional, self-giving. What's the, the same thing? It's used in these verses as well. The same in John 3, 16. God loved us so much. He agape us so much that he sent his son. In Romans 5 and 8, the same word agape says that God demonstrates his agape, his love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And this agape, this love is not based on our worthiness or our goodness. It's a love that's freely given without condition, without expectation of anything in return. And this is the love that we are called to bask in. It's a love that is not based on our performance, our worthiness, or our ability to reciprocate. It's a love that is freely given, generously, and without reservation. That's the love of God. It's also the love that He calls us to exhibit and to have. Let's talk about becoming world overcomers. Now as we have immersed ourselves the past several weeks in 1 John, today we find ourselves standing on the precipice of a grand revelation. We are called to be world overcomers. Now this is not a call to a physical battle, but a spiritual one. It's a call to rise above our trials and tribulations of this world and to stand firm in our faith and to emerge victorious through Jesus Christ. Now, this idea of becoming world overcomers might seem daunting, might even seem impossible. But John assures us that it's not only possible but it's our birthright as the children of God. He tells us for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is a promise. It's a guarantee. It's a divine assurance that through our faith we can overcome the world. Now, we also need to understand the nature of the battle that we're called to fight. The world that John refers to, not, maybe not be the physical world that we inhabit, but it's the spiritual realm that is in opposition to God. And a lot of the physical world that we live in is in opposition to God. It's the realm of sin, the realm of temptation, of darkness and despair that he's talking about. But yet we are not left to fight this battle alone. We are equipped with the entire, the whole armor of God, fortified by His Word and empowered by His Spirit. And we need this each and every day. How many here have never been tempted by anything after you gave your life to Christ? Yeah, that's what I thought. We all are tempted. How many here are righteous and have never failed? Again, that's what I thought. You notice my hands didn't go up either. Why? Because the Word tells us that our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. And we need this love. We need the Spirit of God and the Word of God to help us overcome these temptations and these trials each day. And every day, now, I'm speaking for myself, man. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm speaking for you as well. I need it every single 
day to help me fight temptation and trials. But we also need to recognize the power of faith. Again, this is not a passive acceptance of God's existence. The devil knows God exists. But it's an active trust in his promises. It's a conviction that God is who he says he is and that he will do what he says he will do. A.W. Tozer once wrote, Faith is the gaze of a soul upon a saving God. Faith is a gaze of a soul upon a saving God. It is through this faith. It is through keeping our eyes focused on God, an unwavering focus on God. And it is this reason that we are able to overcome the world. But if we take our eyes off Jesus, we begin to sink. That sounds like a familiar story, doesn't it? But let's also talk about cultivating a spirit of perseverance. The path to victory is often paved with trials and tribulations. I'm going to give you a, a, an example, another example that I like to use. Does anyone here know how you purify gold? Fire. You put it in fire. Put it in a pot, put it in a furnace, and you fire it up. The gold will melt, and you keep firing it up, and the impurities will rise to the top. You skim it off, you have pure gold. Well, sometimes in our lives, God allows us to be put in the furnace. Allows us to go through trials and tribulations. Allows things to get tough. How many here has been through tough times? How many here has had their faith tried? I tried playing golf. I had to quit. <laughs> it tried my faith. I had golf balls on the top of the house. I had golf balls in the woods. I had golf balls everywhere but where I intended them to go. It tried my faith. I had to quit. And every time we go through these things, I want you to remember that God is making gold for the kingdom. We, have, we go through trials and tribulations, but if we keep our eyes on Him, we will make it. And these challenges are not meant to break us. They're meant to strengthen us, to purify us. They're not meant to discourage us, but to deepen our faith. And as we face these trials, we're reminded of the words of James, who encourages us to consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And I gained perseverance by stopping golf. I know some of you played very, very well, and I applaud you. I can't do it. <laughs> Embracing, we also need to embrace our identity as children of God. This is not a title that we earn. Folks, it's, it's a gift that we receive. It's not a status that we achieve, but it's a birthright that we inherit. As children of God, we are heirs to his promises, beneficiaries of his grace and recipients of his love. This identity empowers us to stand firm in the face of identity, to stand firm when you're trying to hit a golf ball and miss it so many times. Or whatever your trial is. That's not the only trial I've ever been through. But it empowers us to stand firm when other trials come. It helps us to remain steadfast in the midst of any other trial. And it helps us to emerge victorious in the battle against the world. Now as I close this morning, 
Let's remember that our faith isn't just about knowing that God exists. The devil knows God exists. It's about experiencing his love, his grace, and his victory in our lives. It's about letting that love overflow from us to others. Showing the world that we are his children. Not just by our words. But by our actions. We're not called just to believe. But to live out that belief in tangible ways. To love as he loves us. To serve as he served us. And to share the good news of his love and salvation with the world. And folks, remember that his commandments are not burdensome. They're not meant to weigh us down, but to lift us up. To help us overcome the world just as he overcame. So let's go out there. Not just as believers, but as overcomers. To serve with his energy, to live in his love, and to share with his boldness. And let's find our contentment. Not in the things of this world, but in Him. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, we ask for your guidance and strength. Help us to live out our faith in a way that honors you. Help us to love as you love, to serve as you serve, and to share your good news with boldness. Fill us with your peace and contentment. And remind us that we are more than conquerors through you. We thank you for your love and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say. Amen. As you are able, please stand and join with us in singing hymn number 430. together together now remind us that we are your children let us go out and love the world and show them that we are your children now father we ask that you bless the food we are about to receive let it nourish our bodies as your word has nourished our souls and let the church say amen, amen.
they are stuck getting in. That's what she said. What are y'all doing? Getting out of the candy Yeah, I haven't had my lights put out. 